Um, hello everybody, my name is Sarah Jane Adams and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my book, Life in a Box. I'm just, I've got a box, I feel like I'm on the st like a magician who's going to pull out a thing and turn it into a bunch of flowers and then doves will fly out, but anyway. I love antique jewellery because it all has a meaning. I love it. Life in a Box, which is kind of about a life out of the box. Um, but I've called it Life in a Box because that kind of rolls off the tongue a lot more easily than Life Out of the Box. It's actually a book about a load of old rubbish, but um, it's my special memories, my special things, and I've written it as a memoir in the form of an auction catalogue. So I've basically used a number of pieces that I've had, some that I've inherited, some that I've found, um, which I've kept for weird and wonderful reasons and that's pretty much the story of the book. I've got a whole load of random sh stuff I was going to swear. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay so, uh, so this is my first little person. I love it. <laughs> and he's got his lot number on him and his name is Whittle One. And this little critter is how I started to learn about the power of social media. But I started Instagram as a result of a campaign that I was doing which was a charitable campaign. I used to have a pet ferret called Buster. There's lots about Buster in the book and his ashes and a ferret wedding that I sponsored and I do a lot of weird charitable things but anyway. So through doing a charitable situation for ferrets with, I was going to say coronavirus but it's something very similar, I was sent a large stuffed ferret which we had to, we looked after for a week and we had to talk about this animal. And I thought I would use this to A, show people about Australia because it was based out of America, this campaign, and B, I thought it would be quite nice to turn it into something of a love story. And this is Whittle One, who was the girlfriend of Xander. Xander was the big ferret who, who came. And it was in that week of showing about Australia, how beautiful Bondi Beach was and blah blah blah, and pulling at the heartstrings with this little fellow, that I realised that social media was an amazing thing. And if you are interested, you can go and find my first ever Instagram page, which is called The Adventures of Whittle One. Okay, Whittle One goes with me travelling whenever I go, which is why she's got this collar, because then she gets hooked onto something so she doesn't get lost. Um, this book is not just about jewellery and it's not just about clothing. In fact, I'm going to let you into a secret because a lot of people are expecting this book to be about fashion and style. This book is absolutely not about fashion or style. So much so that once I've written it, I did a word check. I have not used the word fashion once in this entire book. I've used the word style when it refers to something like advanced style. Sorry, my friend. But it's more a book about memories, and this is Lot 59. This is my school satchel from when I first started going to a sensible school, which was a co ed school in Yorkshire, comprehensive school. I'd been at boarding school from the age of about six till I was about 16 and I basically put my foot down. I, st I was always a rebel and I started really being much more vocal about being a rebel around about that age. This satchel was given to me by my first ever true love. His name was Michael Allen Johnson. He's a sculptor in England. Obviously I was in England at that time. This bag was made, was customized by Michael Johnson. It was then further customized by me. My second boyfriend, whose name is also carved into this satchel. It was a, a different sort of an artist. He was a guitarist, still is a guitarist. Um, and these are the guitar strings from his Stratocaster, his white strap. Because I mean, the, the reason I wrote this book is because I've divested myself of so many small things and big things, a house, its contents, that's all in the book. And this is the small stuff, which is the more sentimental, the more important stuff actually than a wardrobe and a chest of drawers and a bunch of you know, lightings or whatever. So the other really important thing to me is this. This is one of my oldest pieces of clothing. This is a jacket that I found. I was a vagrant really. But this was in 
a derelict garage. I, used to, I went to university in Sheffield when I was about 19, 20, whenever it was that you go to university. And um, that, at that stage, Sheffield in Yorkshire was very, very poor, really working class area. And I used to I used to love exploring old buildings and things, and I found this garage, and, I, and it was open, it was all rotted door. I walked in, and there in the far corner was this old trunk that was all falling apart, filthy, stinking, damp. And I opened it up, and there was all this rags and clothes and stuff, and I just, and, and Victorian, beautiful Victorian Muslim blouses with embroidery and mother of pearl buttons, and oh God, amazing things. And I saw this, just this little piece of fabric scrunched and, I, and it was all damp and mildewy and ponky and I pulled it out and here is my jacket that I've had and I patched it then with another bit of antique <laughs> fabric. Uh, you know it's patched and it's patched and it's patched and it's fraying and it's fraying and I wash it a lot and it just keeps on fraying. But this is one of my favourite things. This is a magnificent Victorian Bohemian garnet hinge bangle. When I say Victorian, it's probably it's probably very early Victorian, about 1850. Bohemian garnets in low carat gold. Victorian garnet bangle in box, circa 1860. The fully encrusted bangle comprises a domed central piece flanked by wide shoulders, tapered to a substantial underside, in a gold fill setting. The more than 150-year-old bangle is seen here, worn with the 33-year-old handmade leather wristband lot 63, in a photo shoot for an article in InStyle magazine suggesting looks for each generation. I had recently turned 50, personalised look. <laughs> this is something that I've, th I've, I've thrown together out of bits of random chain. I can wear this in a number of ways. I can wear it across the body. I can wear it, you know, like there are so many ways that I can wear this. But this has got, again, this is all explained in the book. I won't bang on about it all now. But every single charm on here, a lot of them are, are, are antique charms that I've collected, um, and every single one of them represents things in my world. So, you know, there are things that represent my children. Oh, here's two more baby's teeth. So that's the baby's teeth. This is the, a drum, because one of my children, Natasha, was a drum, used to play the drums. <laughs> but all of these things have a story. Um, it's all in the book. So, um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about some of the items that are featured in this book. There is so, so much more, and if you're interested, do go to Booktopia because it's online, it's able to be ordered online, and uh, yeah, go for it. It's very exciting. Thank you so much. Yay, that was great. Is that Fantastic. all right? Yeah, that was great. That was really, really brilliant. That was fantastic. Thank you. So interesting. Thank you. Obviously, do too much work in the back, but at the beginning, I was quite keen because I did do all my notations and... Oh, oh! <laughs> For those of you who know what knew what we really did. Is that a bookmark? Yes. <laughs> but so, so. I don't make this shit up. Who's <laughs> is stranger than fiction?